Hello, this is the Digital Loop, Season 4, Episode 6. Hi, Ivan, how are you? Hi, Paul, very happy to be here and uh, really looking forward to this episode because so we have some really, really interesting information to share with you guys. Yeah, so uh, I was traveling quite a lot, which explains a little bit of the delay between the, this episode and the previous one. Uh, but whilst I was up in the air uh, across the world, there was one big event that happened, which happens every year, which everybody talks about, which is actually either hated or love. People love the controversy of it or just love uh, to or are jealous because he wished that they were there it's davos the world economic forum uh, it's in my home country in switzerland so davos is a little town up in the mountains i've been there it's great for skiing uh so there were a lot of news about davos and for the first time ever as well a tech crunch uh was covering davos live so they were actually there interviewing people there was a lot of uh, stuff coming out of it and you, you picked up on one topic that kept coming up is the future of jobs yeah the future of jobs this is a really uh, really interesting i mean when you look at the at the covering of davos they were talking that uh, we are at the cusp of uh, the four industrial revolution and uh, they they prepare a report uh, on the future of jobs that when you look at it we're going to put a link on the show notes um Either you can be very excited about it, or either you're. This is time for you to start panicking because the end is near. Uh, really, really interesting information, and and this is something that we wanted to talk a little bit about here. Uh, interesting enough, uh, what, what the, the report starts by showing that uh, there are some uh, socioeconomic drivers such as changes in work environment, uh, a growing middle class and the urbanization in emerging market that is contributing to the changing in employment trends. So a lot of things are happening. A lot of changes are happening very, very quickly. And um, in the short term, between 2015, 2017, uh, the specific technologies uh, that are going to be have a big impact on, on, on the employment are mobile internet, cloud technology, cheaper computer and power, and large scale data storage. In other words, big data. Busy, busy, nah. busy, all the topics we've been talking about for three years on this show, so there's nothing surprising there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but then it gets a little bit more interesting because um, they say that uh, overall after 2018, uh, robotics and the Internet of Things are expected to contribute most to the overall impact of this of this uh, uh, of the environment then and so, to a certain extent artificial intelligence so really and you actually it's not to say that we're smarter than anyone because we're not everybody keeps talking about it it's nice actually that davos now talks about it but these are technologies that we've been seeing there was a first wave like you said mobile cloud everybody was talking about that is social networks and the people were talking in the other buzzwords was big data uh internet of things as well and Artificial intelligence and robotics are the ones that were the big buzzwords again last year, and this is these are all coming together. It's nice that though that they're putting this in perspective in terms of when they think it's they're going to have an impact, especially in society. We talked about it, you and me, uh, a, a lot of, on this show as well. I mean, what is the impact of all these technologies for customers, all these technologies for companies, for startups, and also for society in general? And I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, we can uh, debate about whether these timelines are correct, but it's, it's actually, I believe that it's true that if you put all those together at some point, I might disagree with the timeline, but at some point, something, of course, will happen for society, especially for future of uh, our uh, workplace, uh, work, and careers. Yeah, no, but uh, and and we we invite you also the link to this article on TechCrunch, which is going to be on the show notes. Um, uh, they they mention, as I mentioned, that you, you, it's it's. The, I like the way they said. They said the impact of the of these drivers on employment rates in various industries is both promising and concerning. So you have these two extremes. And on the one hand, uh, these will have an impact on 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 employment rates. Uh, according to this, um, current trends could lead to a net employment impact of more than 5.1 million jobs lost to disruptive labor market changes over the period of 2015-2020 mm -hmm. uh, with a total loss of 7.1 million jobs. So that's a lot of people losing their job due to these changes. Um, and and in, in the article, you will see that the, they, they have a very nice uh, graphics that show this, uh, where are the, um, the, the type of 
jobs uh, that will be suffering the most. Uh, mostly are, are looking at uh, office and administrative, uh, manufacturing and production, uh, management, construction, well, basically, you know, all these industries will be in fact impacted by that. Yeah. yeah, basically when you think about it is everything that can be replaced, everything are process based. If you can divide your jobs by processes and the processes can be taken over by a robot, uh, or when I say robot, I'm not talking about a terminator, I'm talking either an algorithm or other, you know. But if a process can be done cheap, cheaper by uh, a machine, basically, well, there you go, there, your job is at risk. It's a bit simplistic. A lot of people are also debating about how hard is going to hit you, how hard is going to be there, because, you know, there's other, uh, because I, I want to debate it a little bit, there's other stuff that also matter in terms of employment, since we're talking about employment, it's also, of course, you purely economical outlook. We've seen now since we started 2016 that the economy is a bit coughing because of the fall, not the fall, but let's say the stumble of, of, of China. Also, the oil, oil prices are very low, which actually when energy prices are, are low, usually has, helps the economy. But here, there also are some concerns. So it's interesting to see all these stuff uh, being at the same time together. What I mean by that is that it's hard to predict exactly when this will affect uh, the, the jobs. I think that overall it's true that, again, if your job is doing something mechanically all the time, the same thing, a very repetitive tasks, this can be replaced by a computer. This has already happened and it will, this will continue to happen probably faster. But a lot of the other stuff behind the scenes we don't know, what will happen with the economy? Is the economy going to suffer? Because, of course, if the economy suffers, then the investment in, by companies in those machines will not happen as fast. Thus, jobs, humans, will be safe for a little bit longer. But, yeah, it's interesting. It's now, actually, uh, uh, the other thing, because you, we just mentioned machine, uh, you know, you said the... I think the fourth industrial revolution, is it the third revolution in this uh, uh, revolution, or you could even say the second mach machine age. I mean, these are great books, book titles. They're all very, very uh, impactful. But I think overall, the message here is that the big leaders at Davos are, I don't know if they're concerned, but actually are looking at it. So it means that there's something that Maybe in terms of a company level, they're concerned that they might actually be replaced. I'm not sure they're really concerned about jobs, though, but that's me being a bit uh, <laughs> critical of Davos here. Uh, yeah. Go on. No, Sorry, but, uh, I interrupted you. Yeah. No, no, no. But 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 I, I totally what I what I think that this is important for for maybe not for for Bono and friends in in in, uh, in a beautiful uh, ski resort um, is the fact that what's happening now is that there is this new set of uh, employable skills that Correct. in order to keep yourself competitive in the marketplace you need to grow and you need to develop now the the problem is that um, you know probably in the past you could have you could take your time to learn these skills you could take you know a few years to develop this expertise and then you know uh, when there is this shift between let's call it the industry the revolutions that are happening according to to to, to these you know uh, topics that 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 the the, the the first fourth fifth industrial revolution there were decades or there were time in between these revolutions where you could adopt these new skills yeah. today this we don't have that time today you need to develop these skills on the go and this is where i think that most organizations are going to have the problem that if, if, if organizations do not have this culture of continuous improvement and continuous development of their skills and the workforce, there are going to be a moment where they're going to be caught by surprise, and not even by surprise, it's just... It I, I, will, I will add you, right, not only organizations, but even societies, because how do we train our youth? How do we train them uh, through school, university? Are universities still relevant? I mean, that's another debate, but... How do we train them? Do they have the proper skills to enter the, the, the marketplace, the workforce, or not? Uh, so this is also a very big topic. And I, I, again, you see that. But by the way, the, it's not a topic that's only reserved to uh, to the WEF. I mean, this is something that we've been talking about. You've seen the headlines all around for the past, at least the past year. And even, I think it was two days ago, Y Combinator 
announced so the famous accelerator in uh in silicon valley announced that they're going to do research about basic income so uh and if you if you read through this basic income means that we know we are disrupting all the industries and we feel that maybe it won't be able these new industries won't be able to employ as many people as it was the case until now so maybe one solution for society here is to offer some kind of basic income so basically to offer money to uh to citizens because well that's maybe all the only way out of this i don't know if it's true or not i think it's a very hot debate and i think also that's why the web davos we're so keen to talk about it. So do you want to talk about a little bit about these uh, skills that are needed in the future? Yeah, I mean, they, they, were, they had an interesting, I'm looking here on my other monitor. Um, basically, they look at the top 10 skills that uh, you need to develop, um, they say, by the, for the year 2020. Uh, I will go one by one, and, um, and, and, and we look at it from, oh, let's go from bottom up. Number 10, we have cognitive flexibility. Number nine is negotiation. Eight is service orientation. Number seven, judgment and decision making. Number six, emotional intelligence. Five, coordinating with others. Four, people management. Three, creativity. Number two, critical thinking. And ladies and gentlemen, number one is complex problem solving. So when you think about it, they're all very people related. So you can see that exactly. most of it is actually, I, I call that lat lateral thinking is the ability to, uh, you know, there's very nice words to put there, but it's really this ability that for the moment, computers have not been able to replace. Uh, creativity is one also that's very vaguely de uh, defined, but this is really the way that only us humans can do. And again, that comes back to what you said, Ivan, about, oh, well, companies should push that and we know that some organizations you know are very process based so they don't really liberate their employees to be very creative uh, critical thinkers you know critical thinking in a company sometimes actually doesn't get you very far <laughs> uh but also again on a, on a society level on country levels i mean how do we and i don't know the solution for it this is very interesting how do we push our kids to actually develop these type of skills that are very different for the skills our parents were learning at school so uh, it's, it's 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 fascinating i mean we'll put the link uh, uh, on that one because i think it's uh, it's uh, needs to be repeated that we might have to go through a little bit of that direction instead of teaching very uh, i'm not saying we should abandon the basics of education but these are the kind of uh, stuff we want our kids to have in order to uh, thrive in, uh, within the next uh, century Absolutely. I mean, it reminds me. I, I will. I don't know if I we're going to be able to share the link to this article because Seth Godin, in he has mentioned the fact that you know the problem with education is that education should focus on helping students and kids learn how to solve problems. Uh, this is how you develop the, the the critical thinking. This is how you develop complex problem solving. Not by formulas not by you know following the same way that we've been doing the education system for the last 50 years but actually learning pe teaching people how to think and uh, um, it's fascinating that again yes on the one hand you have the technology uh, the technology uh, challenges and advancements making and having an impact on on, on the marketplace and on, on the workforce but at the end of the day, it's not just about the technology. It's also about you know these skills and this understanding of this new reality that you need to develop, and you need to develop now. You don't have the time to wait and see if you know if if in four years I will be able to get a job with what I know today. Uh, I had a very interesting conversation with a with a, a managing partner of a, one of the big big four companies, uh, and what he was telling me that. One of the most important things for them is finding the people that are always, always open to continue developing their own competencies and continue to learn. And basically the way he said it is like, we need to find people that every day they are learning something new because the knowledge that, that, that you learned four years ago today is irrelevant, uh, particularly when you're talking about you know, consulting or you know, high-level consulting and advisory. But in a way, this is the mentality that you need to be able to continue learn and grow and learn new skills and new capabilities. Otherwise, chances are that in six months, in a year from now, you're out.
Yeah, and also for companies, it's a life lifeline for their for their own. I mean, uh, again, it's simply by looking at the uh, so the, the World Economic Forum, we'll put a link has put a, a report on the future of work. Uh, it's pretty nicely done. This is what TechCrunch uh, that you mentioned even earlier is uh, summarizing, and uh, they've done surveys asking you know companies, I mean leaders of companies, what are their you know the big impacts on uh, their uh, companies, and you know people is always at the top because you know. When we talk about the future of work and the future of the workplace and the future of careers and the future of what it means to have a job and how the jobs are being defined is basically the lifeline of current firms, of current companies. And they know they are at risk, uh, not only because a network world might not need firms the same way it used to need firms because now we people are more and more working remotely uh so the implementing flexible work policies they are offering new types of 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 uh benefits to their employees because they want to keep uh people the, the great people that they need in order to thrive or at least stay stay alive so really the change in nature of work but you don't have to forget again that there are other stuff that, ha that also happened that are important for the future is of course the economical uh background of the world the, everything of course is interlinked you cannot fully separate one from the other but we know that, for instance, we live uh, in, in Europe, but you know the emerging, emerging middle class in countries like China, India, Nigeria is also something that is shifting the power of companies, the power of countries. So all this, so it's a pretty interesting report to, to read through if you're interested in that. And I think you should, because uh, uh, although, again, the timeline is going to be debated, I think this is happening when and how is still up in the air, but this is happening. There was other stuff, actually, there was very interestingly, uh, I met his daughter, the, there was the, the president, is it the prime minister or the president? Uh, I'm, I've got to look it up, of Slovakia. I think he's the president of Slovakia. He's called Andres Kiska. I, I met his daughter at uh, Banque du Liban Accelerate in, uh, in Lebanon, in Beirut, uh, last year. And it's interesting because you can see that, yeah, of course, Davos attracts like all the world leaders, the big leaders of big fortunes, 500 companies, some movie stars as well, some rock stars like Bono, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, it's interesting to, to see there's a, an interview of him also by TechCrunch uh, because he is himself, he was himself an entrepreneur. It's the first president not to have had any ties with uh, the Communist Party because, of course, it was behind the... Uh, the wall uh, uh, before 1989. So it's interesting also to read to see that there are uh, leaders that are thinking about their country as our uh, leaders think about the companies in very uh, uh, disruptive ways, trying to do stuff. We keep mentioning here on this show Estonia because it offers a lot of you know the e-residency. I'm still are you a resident, uh, Ivan, or not yet? No, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, me neither. But I mean, it's interesting to see that these are the things that on multi levels happen. It's not only the survival and the uh, and uh, of companies. It also countries need to think think about it. Was there any uh, any other thing that uh, struck you at uh, Davos, uh, Ivan? Uh, all the news that we got because it was all over the news for a week. Yeah, well, basically this is the one that I caught mo mo most of my attention from the point of view of, uh, it got me also thinking the fact that, uh, um, you know, particularly in the type of work that we do, that very often when we talk with clients, we talk about uh, digital transformation and customer experience and innovation. And, and very often we look, we tr have the tendency to focus more on the on the business side from the point of view of marketing, from the point of view of sales, business development, customer exp experience, customer satisfaction. Uh, so it was an interesting thing to to shift the pers shift the, the 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 look from focusing on marketing and sales into actually the development of the the the, the skills and the culture and and the knowledge that you need to grow in order to continue being relevant five years from now ten years from now twenty years from now so uh, I think that this is something interesting to 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 look at it not just from the point of view of digital or oh, digital marketing but okay digital what does that mean it means you know the impact of technology in society the impact on technology in, on jobs the impact on technology and education okay that's great how can we cope with it what our employees need to do in order to be able to continue growing and developing and what can we do us as a company in order to keep you know moving forward uh, because at the end of the day what moves the company forward is the, the people inside it's not you know anything else um, so so interesting to look at it from that point of view 
Yeah, so, and Davos itself always uh, criticized at the same time. Some people adore it, some people hate it. That that's what it is. You know, of course, anytime you have gatherings of world leaders, people are saying, oh, this is a conspiracy or something. It's, it's true that uh, the one criticism I can accept has been an, uh, uh, an article by Felix Salmon that was uh, called, I think it's called The Failure of Davos. Uh, what he says is that, you know, you know, it's great to meet, it's great to talk, but in, and what are the out, what is the outcome? The outcome, the dream of the World Economic Forum was to kind of make the world come together. It hasn't really happened. Uh, I don't know if he's totally right, but what is what I would still give to Davos is that it allows people uh, like this to meet. Uh, maybe one day you and me will be invited. We hope so. But it's it's more about having the debate. I know the debate sometimes feel a little bit. Yeah, it's only people from high above. Well, you know, more and more we live in a network world, more and more everybody can have a stake in trying to be participating in a debate and especially shaping the future by constructing your building startups, building initiatives. And, you know, the, if you do that, you are sometimes also invited there. I'm not saying that you're going to change the world by, be, by attending Davos, but I, is it relevant? I don't know, but I think it's still, it's still useful. So we'll continue covering that. Of course, next year in uh, 2017, but I'm getting ahead of myself because we're running out of time. So uh, we're not going to record for, I think, three weeks because it's now it's your time, uh, Ivan, to travel a little bit. So uh, we'll see you all in three weeks. Yeah, well, we'll be, I will be traveling, but uh, hopefully we're going to be able to continue putting some interesting articles uh, on Twitter and on Facebook. So uh, although we might not have a, a new show in the next couple of weeks, uh, check out uh, our Facebook page and our Twitter so you can continue to get some interesting insights on the digital loop. And we promise that you and me will still have a job in three weeks. On that, bye-bye, guys. Ciao.